Hey, it's Monday night. Indeed it is. And tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop, we have a great star. Guy has been with us a few times, but the first time in our studio. I love it. I know. Anthony Mendez, who's going to tell us all about all the cool stuff that he's doing. And, uh, you know, maybe you've watched Jane the Virgin and you'll know him from there. But once you realize his voice is in a lot of different places. Yeah. That yeah. transition from the other coast. Yes. It's always interesting to yes. hear people's stories. So now he's here in L.A. and now he's here in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. So, and we got lots of cool tech stuff to talk about. Yeah, there's. A, we'll talk about a Studio Bricks thing, a soundproofing of a booth problem, uh, and I got a review video of the MXL CR89, courtesy of Jack Daniel. All right. So we'll check that out too. And lots of other fun stuff. So stay tuned. Voiceover Body Shop is coming right up. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. All right. All right. We got a crowd in here tonight. Woohoo. You know, you know, that, that closing shot, you know, when we're coming into the, into the, into the clubhouse here, yeah. the tomatoes have turned into a jungle. <laughs> we should do like a GoPro right through, right through the, the middle tomatoes. of those. <laughs> that would be hilarious. So if anybody wants any tomatoes, I have many, <laughs> all sorts of varieties. How the grapefruit coming? Grape, they won't be here till Christmas. Oh, okay. They got a while. Ago. Right. It's just they look like green uh, baseballs right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, but you know, lots of produce here at the voiceover body shop. Anyway, tonight on our show, Anthony Mendez is here in our studio. We're going to talk with him about all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, he's been on the show before, but his career has, you know, morphed and he's gotten some great stuff going. And plus he just has a great voice. He does. And he's a bit of a geek. That's the part I like And the we're going to talk lots of tech with him, too. the so. first time I met the guy was at a geeky trade show. We'll mention that later. Well, that'll be fun. All right. And uh, let's see what else is going on. We've got some tech stuff. We're going to talk about that. And uh, some really cool things. Plus, also, if you're watching the show on Facebook, make sure, if you want to go to the website, it's www.vobs.tv. And check out the new website. Yep. So, uh that Let will, us know. Let yeah. us know what you think. It is a brand new site. It's just been built over the last few weeks. We're, we're really kind of just testing. So yeah. if there's any ways we can make it better, let us know. Absolutely. All right. Well, we sort of have news tonight, so let's run the news intro. Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. Alrighty, well, here is the voiceover extra news, sort of, for June 25th. New Studio Bricks booth for sale. It's a story, yes. The Studio Bricks home office in Spain is going to send Wovo either one of two brand new booths for WovoCon 5 in November in Las Vegas at the Trelf for brief use during the conference. Only there's a catch. 
And the catch is, is that it must be sold before it arrives. Interesting catch. Mm. Either one of the two versions below that we're going to tell you about are being offered. The Studio Bricks One Plus is being offered at seven thousand one eighty-five. Would you slide the prompter towards the back, away from us, and that'll make me easier. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. Um, and the booths are being sold at a fifteen percent discount. I didn't mention the other booth is at sixty-three eighty-three. So there's the One Plus, yeah. and there's the One, which is a little bit smaller. Um, the fifteen percent discount and the shipping and handling from Spain is also being offered at a fifteen percent discount. So you add that to together and it could be a pretty good size savings. Right. So you're being notified about this exceptional price because as a California or Nevada resident, sorry you East Coast guys, you are best positioned to take advantage of this offer. Even so, you'll have to pay the 15% discounted shipping from Spain and shipping from the Tropicana Resort in Las Vegas to your home in Nevada or California, as well as the total 15% discounted price of the Studio Bricks unit you choose. Mm -hmm. Our deadline to seal this deal is the end of August, so please contact Brian Doucette at briandvoice at gmail.com for further details. Yeah, at so. briandvoice at mm -hmm. gmail.com. So this is a great deal because they're sending a Studio Bricks booth to WovoCon, and we'll have the booth there, but somebody has to buy it. Yeah, so really kind of in essence, if you think about it, you become the sponsor in a weird way of this booth being at WovoCon. Right. Right. So you can sort of tell all your friends, hey, that booth's there because of right. me. Yeah. You know? Yes. <laughs> now, it would help. It. Now, the best deal is this if it's somebody in Las Vegas. Of course. And we know we have lots of guys watching. Local in delivery Vegas. would yeah. be really easy. Yeah. Well, then you could just get your car and shove it in one piece at a time. I'll tell you this the one thing fun about buying a booth from a conference yeah. um, is when they were shipped to uh, VO Atlanta. Um, at least one booth was assembled. I'm trying to remember if we had two assembled. I think we had one assembled. Um, the person that won the boot or bought the booth, was it Annie Arndt? Is that her name? Andy, sorry. Andy Arndt. Andy yeah. Arndt. I'm yeah. sorry. She had everybody that was there that her friends and the presenters signing the booth. <laughs> so her booth has all these signatures on the side. So that's a cool, fun perk. Maybe you could have everybody sign it. Yeah, really. If it's you like that kind the of thing. Studio Bricks booths are generally white. Yeah. This so. one was like a, an, like a neutral gray, so yeah. it looked perfect, all signed. Well, that'll look really cool. And they're great <laughs> booths. You know, we know Miguel and Guillermo at, uh, at Studio Bricks. They make a great product. So yep. if you're going to WovoCon, which you should, need, you should need to register for right now anyway, you'll have a chance to see a Studio Bricks booth, and if you want one, you can purchase one. Mm -hmm. And be a hero to everybody at the conference. <laughs> That's right, because that booth will very likely be used at the conference to help people get their sessions done. Absolutely. I don't know if that's the intention, right? But I have a feeling yeah. that we'll it'll also be have utilized. We'll have some other stuff there too. So very anyway. nice. So aside from that mm -hmm. bit of little technical sales stuff, mm -hmm. what's up in tech this week? Well, actually, I got a microphone that's been. Uh, it was starting to collect a very fine layer of dust on the top, <laughs> and Jack Daniel had loaned me this uh, MXL CR89, and he was like, "Hey, man." Would you bring that back to the studio today? And I was like, I took that as a sign. It's time to get a review done. So I did my first review in quite a while on my George the Tech channel. Uh, we'll roll this review. It's it's kind of long, so relax. And if it gets too long, we might cut it and then continue it after the break. But uh, here you go. Here's our little MXL uh, CR89 review. Hey everybody, this is George the Tech with a one take review. What's one take review? That means I'm just going to talk, no edits, flubs and all, here you go. This seems to be the only way I can get myself motivated to do reviews and things like lately. I've just been, uh, well, pretty darn busy here at Georgia Tech. Blessed, but busy. And when I'm given something to review, I need to do it in a timely fashion. So I got a little kick in the pants this morning by an email from Jack, <laughs> Jack Daniel, who loaned me this microphone. And he said, hey, would you bring that back today when you, we, when you come into the studio? Because he, uh, he helps us over at the VOBS.TV studio. And I was like, you got it, man. So <laughs> time to get this review in real quick. So this is, uh, this is the case it comes in. This is the beautiful MXL. Uh, this is the road case the MXL uh, CR89 comes in. If you're familiar with MXL mics, this is pretty typical. I'd say it's a little bit nicer than what's typically seen. 
in their product line in terms of cases, but it seems to be really nicely made. Kind of like a little mini Halliburton case or something. Let's take a look inside and see what's doing in here. All right, there is the inside of the CR89 case. There's our microphone, which this is probably one of the heaviest microphones I think I've ever held in my hand. It is very heavy. I don't know why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little bit of information about it on their website here while I talk, but I believe it's probably because of the, the, the chassis or the, or the case or the, the tube that holds the electronics is probably made out of a very heavy brass or some kind of very high quality material. And that's a material of choice for making quality microphones because it doesn't resonate. And so you don't want to color the sound of the mic. So here you are. Look how beautiful that is. It's sort of like a dark chrome color. Chromed, but blacked out chrome. Kind of kind of dark and evil looking a little bit, isn't it? Totally devoid of any switches. There's no high pass, no pad, nothing. This is a pretty pure microphone. And then a nice beefy, heavy duty looking shock mount that they include with it. A step above the average that I've seen. It seems very well made on par with what you'd see with some of the much more expensive microphones from Germany. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the shock mount, very nicely made. And they give you a few extra, a few extra bits, a few extra nylon uh, um, uh, elastics, because these things do wear out after a few years, depending on your climate, and a couple keys to lock the mic case. All right, so let's put that aside. And let's get into it. Just looking at the webpage here, you can see that they've obviously enjoyed a quote from a Pro Audio Review magazine for this microphone where it was favored over the Sony 800 or C800G, which is a very well-known, extremely expensive microphone. And the thing is, it's like microphone cost has nothing to do with how appropriate it is for someone's voice or how good it sounds. And I've learned that to be true, for sure. Um, you know, this microphone was obviously designed to, to aim at really high-end mics. In the MXL line, it's not nearly the cheapest. It's not the most expensive either. It's in the, probably the top third of their price range, but still only comes in around 250 US dollars, somewhere around there. So it's uh, it's really quite impressive. Um, some of the spe specs that people like to see: um, gold sputtered eight six mi uh, gold sputtered six micron diaphragm. It's a cardioid mic, of course, condenser. Um, what else is useful here? Can handle 138 dB, so you can yell into this thing. Signal to noise ratio is 80 dB. That's not bad. The equivalent noise level, which is what a lot of people look at, 14 dB, sometimes also known as self noise. If you compare that to like a Neumann TLM 103, that one's more like, I think, a six. Don't quote me on that, but you can Google it. So this is obviously not as quiet as a TLM 103, but it's also a quarter of the price. Um, so a dynamic range of 124 dB is what you get. And I think that is more than enough and plenty quiet enough for recording voiceover work. So as you can see, 1.85 pounds, quite a heavy microphone, but uh, it feels it and I'd say it sounds it. I think I lied about that editing part. I had to edit that in. I'm gonna put the mic up here on a tripod stand. Let's take a listen to see how it sounds, because that's at the end of the day really all that matters. You guys can look at specs all day long on the internet, but we want to know how it sounds. And as you can hear, I'm I'm also I'm using another MXL microphone. I have this is the one I've been using just for doing my webcasts for years now. It's an MXL 1006, way out of production. A um, little bit of processing on it. I won't be you know there's some expander and things like that on this microphone, so it's going to sound a little artificially clean and bright than it normally would. Um, so actually, if I bypass all that. That's what this microphone sounds like. So this is just totally flat compression expander off. And guess what? Yes, you can hear my computer fan. And I know what you're thinking. Really? George the Tech can hear your computer fan in the recordings? Seriously, dude? I know. Give me a break. It's, an, it's a seven-year-old Mac Mini. It's This is not what I normally do in here. So we're, we're going to have to make that work today. But anyway, here's my MXL 1006. No compression, nothing. And we'll go ahead and put the... CR89 up in its place. Well, actually on this mic. Notice how I put the pop stand on. I'm putting my processing back on. There we go. I like that. A little more gain, a little hotter. Um, 
notice I put the, the shock mount on the arm first. Always have the shock mount on before you put the mic in the shock mount, right? Pro tip. And if you, I don't know if you noticed how quickly I did it because I've done it a thousand times. I held the shock mount one hand while I tightened the thread. I literally loosened the arm itself and tightened it into the shock mount instead of spinning it around. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. Then, microphone, up and in. I'm gonna drop it down, make sure it's in frame so you can see. And now I'm gonna hold the microphone firmly so it does not fall and painstakingly twist the little knurled nut on the top, which frankly could stand to have a little bit of uh, lubrication added to it, make it turn easier, but anyway. Holding the mic firmly, twisting the knurled nut, but not making it really tight. It doesn't need to be tight. You want to be able to turn the mic around to make adjustments to the mic placement. Okay. So there it is. Let me plug it in. Let's take a listen to it. All right. Obviously, I'm a little closer to this one. I'm a lot closer. I'm about put my uh, the pinky to thumb distance away from the mic. No processing. Totally flat, as you hear it in my room. Um, this is a very che cheaply or simply <laughs> quickly treated room. It's got a moving blanket on the floor. I have a terry cloth towel packed tacked to the ceiling above my head, directly above my head to get rid of some of those early reflections, but it's got a little bit of liveliness to it. It's not too bad, but this is, just give you an idea what this mic sounds like. This is um, just making sure it's totally flat. Yes, it's going um, into my Roland, what's this thing called? This old Roland MMP2 mic preamp, which has a, a lot of processing on board I can use, but right now it's totally flat. Uh, then it's going into my Mackie uh, Onyx 820i into a line input. EQ is totally flat, and then that's passing into the computer via FireWire. So you're hearing it captured right off FireWire right now, theoretically. Actually, I take that back. You're actually hearing me through um, an Avid Mbox. That's the device that's here hearing me right now. If we want to just be thorough, we can record another track in Twisted Wave and record this microphone. Let's do that. Let's record this microphone simultaneously through another signal record, another recording chain. And we'll record through channel two of the Mackie. Check, check, check. So now this is uh, channel two of the, this is the FireWire port of the Mackie. Channel two re being recorded simultaneously as the Avid, which is being recorded in my screen recording and video capturing software called ScreenFlow. So all those things are running together here. Simultaneously, and we're getting a nice capture of what that will sound like. Um, modulation, we're getting about minus 12, minus to minus 6. I, I firmly believe that you can record it at, if you record a 24-bit, you do not have to be peaking up to minus 6 at all. You can be peaking below minus 6, below minus 12 even, and still get fantastic quality. But anyway, this is what the CR89 on my voice, which is a little bit, a little, my voice is a little deeper sounding right now than normal. It's not super warmed up yet. But there you have it. I think um, for its price, I think it competes very uh, favorably with some of the other mics that are designed this way. This minimalistic, um, no bells and whistles design approach, no switches or anything. Um, it seems pretty, I don't know. I don't have any other mics that are of a much higher end price range to compare it with some of the usual suspects. But um I got to say, I'm pretty impressed. I saw this sh uh, microphone at NAMM a couple of years ago, and it just randomly saw a picture of it up in Jack's studio. And I thought, Jack, I've always wanted to try that mic. And he said, no problem, I'll bring it in. Thanks to you, Jack. I really appreciate you letting me borrow the CR89, getting, you know, letting me use it for a while. And I have to say, I do like it. I think it has a little, a little more upper mid-range presence than maybe I'd like for everything. Um, but that can be smoothed out with a little bit of EQ. I checked the, the, the frequency curve. In fact, if I go back and look at the web page, the frequency curve shows that the microphone is not ultra flat. It's got a little bit of a rise slightly in the low, low mid range, 
which is not too bad. And then it's got a little bit of a dip around 1K, which is actually generally a good thing. And then a little bit of a rise at the upper mid, you know, the upper frequencies around 8K and then rolls off. It's not a flat mic, but it's also not an overly bumpy mic with like big presence peaks with tons of sibilance and treble. And I, I think this mic could sound really good on, on, on women's voices, you know, which is what my original thought was, was that this could be a nice good on many voices but maybe even for women because it does not artificially bump the treble up which most women do not need this mic will not overly emphasize um sibilance so anyway that's the end of my rambling quick mini one take review of the cr89 microphone um and if you want to see more stuff like this comment below tell me what you want me to talk about tell me what you want to see on this channel this channel is very young. It's not got much going on on here yet. I have a lot of work to do. So if you're interested in seeing more content, subscribe, click the bell so you know when I release more videos. And I'll try to keep a, more of a flow going now that I have this little quote-unquote studio set up for doing this. So anyway, thanks again. My name's George Whittem from georgethetech.com, and I uh, appreciate it so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys around the YouTubes. Bye. And now we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear and we find our heroes Sheriff Dan and Marshal George on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. But, you know, you don't know where to turn to. For the best training and the truth about working successfully with ACX, well... Here's your golden ticket. Registration for the 2018 ACX Home Study Audiobook Masterclass is now open for a limited time at acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. You'll get four weeks of absolutely transformational training via audio, video, and online with support every step of the way. And you'll be led by David H. Lawrence the 17th and Dan O'Day whose past students have narrated and produced close to 3,000 books on the ACX platform. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. And when you register before 9 p.m. on Pacific Time on Tuesday, July 19th, David and Dan will pay for your first $500 of tuition. Act fast. acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. Do what you've dreamed of doing, narrating audiobooks as a part of your VO portfolio. Go to <laughs> acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. That's acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do... They break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons we're here is to help you with your home voiceover studio. I mean, that's how we started this whole darn thing. That was the thing. whole point of this thing when we started it out. Who's going to want to watch a show on home voiceover studios? It's the voiceover studios answer to car talk. That's right. That's where it came from. And that was in 2011, and now it's July 2018. <laughs> so I guess people want to watch stuff about home voiceover Amazing. studios. Uh, and they want to learn about home voiceover studios. And their home voiceover studios 
break where they get buzzes and hums and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, there's only two places on the face of the earth where you can go to get the expertise you need to get your home voiceover studio the way it's supposed to sound. The way it's supposed to sound. Whistle. The way it's supposed to sound. Why am I not catching on to what you're throwing down there? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not on the what same... It's what it's supposed to sound like is whistle. Oh. Now, okay, does that make sense? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's my acronym... Take it for what it's worth. Oh, it's an acronym. Oh, yes. my God. Whistle. <laughs> what it's supposed to sound like. Like, whistle. <sighs> anyway. Okay, now I'll remember that. You'll never have to do that again. I'm whistle. You've been, I've been saying whistle. that for weeks, and you're like, <laughs> now you figured it really? out? Really? Where have I been? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what is it supposed to sound like? But the thing is, is there's only two guys that know how to do it. This gentleman here, and hopefully me... Yeah. You always need a backup. So you got two people to choose from. You find me over at georgethetech.com, and you find Dan over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Right. And uh, it makes it easy because we can teach you how to do it right from soup to nuts, from alpha to omega. From, from USB to Thunderbolt 3. That's right. And, and we'll teach you the difference between those two. Uh, and if things go wrong and we want to be able to hear what your sound sounds like, all you have to do is drop off a sample of your audio. At, uh, it's 25 bucks at homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you're not confident with what it sounds like, well, I'll tell you what happens when people send me the audio. It's like, hey, did you know this was in there? We'll talk about that in a second. But again, go to, uh, to georgethecheck.com. You can or, leave me a sample or you can head over to homevoiceoverstudio.com mm -hmm. and uh, click on the specimen collection cup. <laughs> That is literally there, and that will take you right to the Dropbox. Your cup runneth over. It friend. does. Anyway, enough commercial stuff. Uh, we'd like to talk about tonight about soundproofing. Now, somebody sent me a sample, as I was just mentioning mm -hmm. before, uh, of a booth that they had, a custom-built booth. Yep. And at the end, she, you know, she sends me some silence. All of a sudden, I hear this sound. At the end. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh -huh. it sounds like a dog's claws on a wooden floor, which right. is unmistakable. Yeah. And especially I, when you have a couple dogs. Dog, so espe yeah, especially. Does. So she sends me a picture of the booth, and sure enough, there is a, there's a, there's a crate right there with a dog mm -hmm. bed in it. And she's like, you're right, it was. And I'm like, I'm sorry. If I'm wrong, tell me. But yeah, are yeah. there... Is there a dog walking up to the booth as you're finishing At that test? one dog. And she's like, yes, there was. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> I, I, my hearing isn't gone at my, at my late age. And, uh, but it raises a problem. Yeah. She's in a, she's in a soundproof booth. Right. Why is there the sound of a dog's foot <laughs> during her audio? That's a good question. Well, Did she have a microphone outside the booth? No, I said, is the door back? open? No, is the door open? No, yeah. the door's not open. Okay. Is there a seal around the door? Hmm. And she's like, well, I know there isn't. The guy that built it had to leave, and he never put anything in there. Oh. Or he put it in too loose, and she's like, well, the door okay. doesn't, doesn't close all the way. Uh -huh. Well, if the door doesn't close on your soundproof booth, what you basically have <laughs> is just a booth. It's a hole. <laughs> You have a soundproof booth with a hole, hole in it. That's right, but it's not so soundproof. A small gap around your door or a gap in a window, whatever it is. If you have a gap, it can only be like a millimeter or so. But if it goes like around the perimeter of the door or more, um, more, is that possible? Whatever. <laughs> um, if it goes around the door, it's If it's, it's like more having... than a perimeter, then it, you're just totally out it's in another universe. <laughs> gone into another, it's dimension, another dimension, literally. Um, then it's, just like, it's like having a hole like this big right in the middle of the wall. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's a big deal. And the thing is, Small gaps like cracks in the door let through higher frequency sounds. And that may sound so logical it's impossible, but that's kind of how it works. Like a, a, an opening acts as like a noise fil a filter. Right. So a door that's heavy will stop a lot of the lower sounds, but a crack in the door will let through the higher sounds. Right. And that's why you hear that sound through the, through the crack that's in the right. door. And she was mighty embarrassed by it too. But well, the, the thing is, is the door doesn't close all the way and there's not a proper seal on it, that totally short-circuits the idea of soundproof. 
She and, shouldn't be embarrassed because honestly, no. I, I know what booth she has, and we're not going to say where it came from. That wouldn't be fair. But the booth that she has, I've seen studios with a door that costs twice as much of, as, as this entire booth. And I'm not kidding. No, there I are mean, studio doors that cost six to eight thousand uh, dollars. There was one installed at the uh, Voiceover Lab here in Hollywood, in West, in uh, well. Not Hollywood. Well, at the SAG after Midtown. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's SAG after at Wilshire at the Tarpons. Right. And these these studio doors went in, mm, was it 2011 when that place was built? Now I'm starting to forget. 2010, 2011. And that studio, the one door in their solo booth never quite sealed right. It hmm. And it, it was a pain because, yeah, it was extremely heavy. It had like lead shot in it. It weighed like 300 pounds. But... The seal never had a perfect seal, so it had somewhere along that along that seal it let some sound in, mm. and so it filtered out everything except you could hear high frequency sound. You right. you wouldn't hear voices; you'd hear more like you'd hear that through the crack in the door. It was really strange. So anybody that was out in the classroom area or the control room area, they had to be quiet, which made it very difficult to have someone in the solo booth recording right. while there was anything else going on. And eventually they had those doors replaced. Well, the second half of that story is yes. brand new doors went in, right? I get uh, an email from uh, the lab administrator, Eric, saying, uh, we got new doors in and we still hear uh, voices through the seam of the door, of the new door. I was like, are you kidding me, right? And um, I, went, I was over there for something and the new doors have a magnetic seal. Right. So they have like this strip of magnet that goes all the way around. <coughs> right. And you would think that's going to be a perfect seal. Right. So I'm running my finger down the seal along the edge. And all of a sudden I hit something sharp mm -hmm. with my finger. And I'm like, what's that? I pick it, I pull it off and it sticks to my finger. And it is a teeny weeny metal shaving. Like when they were putting the screws, a little, ch that little chunk of metal stuck to the magnet. Creating a gap. And created a little gap on either wow. side of the magnet that was probably, you know, a couple inches long. I took the little chunk of metal out and I was like, how's that? <laughs> it was like, I mean, it, the detail, devil's in the, de basically the story of that is the devil's in the details. Right. I mean, the littlest thing can let sound in. Right. Another time I'll tell you about the sandwich in the wall story. Oh, wow. Not That's a, not my story. It's somebody else that somebody else told me. Probably not as bad as the cat in the wall story. No, it doesn't smell that bad. We've heard that one before. But it's fascinating yeah. what that sandwich did. But when it comes to soundproofing, a proper seal on a door is essential mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh you know and, and, and people don't realize that it's like well just close the door even if you're in a closet it helps to put a rubber seal on that and a a proper uh, seal at the bottom at yeah, the a sweep yes or a sweep. A threshold uh, on a sweep on the threshold you can actually buy magnetic or i'm sorry not magnetic automatic sweeps they're right. called automatic door There's bottoms a little thing in it when the door closes it closes mm -hmm. up and it lowers this this and little those are available for any door you That's can right. actually retrofit them onto your existing doors. You don't have to replace mm. them. Or it's, it's not very hard to install. If you have the opportunity to have a double door scenario, that's what we have in this studio. There's an exterior door and an interior door. That's even better. Right. That's, to me, better than one single door. Because, first of all, it's a lot less expensive to buy two sound damp, not only can them soundproof, but two like exterior grade doors. Right. They're going to have seals, thresholds, and everything. But you put two of them together you get much better performance than just one door. Right. And if one seal isn't perfect, you got another one to back up the first one. Wow. So. so if that doesn't prove that we know more about home voiceover studios than anybody on the planet. You don't need proof, do you? Well, maybe you, maybe you do. Maybe, maybe you think we're full of... Yeah, maybe. maybe. Let us know. Anyhow. Let us know down in the, in the comments. Yes. Your YouTube comments. Let us know if, if, yeah. we're, if we're right. Well, Anthony Mendez has been sitting by patiently mm -hmm. uh while we've been yapping along here about soundproofing and various other things so stay tuned we'll have him on in just a minute here so we'll be right back on voiceover body show are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio no wonder the information out there is mostly mythology this is the best microphone to use you have to have a preamp you need a soundproof booth this software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. 
someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. And now we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. Alrighty, Anthony Mendez is a voice actor. We all knew that, but he's got an impressive list of credits to his career including on-air promos, movie trailers, and TV commercials in both English and Espanol. Anthony has written and is currently working on a TV pilot inspired by his own life experiences of growing up in the headstone business, but with a supernatural twist called Mike Tomb. He hopes to have adapted it to a serialized and motion comic book. Well, what else? His breakthrough role came as the Latin lover narrator on Jane the Virgin, which earned him two consecutive primetime Emmy nominations in 2015 and 2016 for Outstanding Narrator. And let's welcome once again to VoiceOver Body Shop, Anthony Mendez. And I now we return it's to those great to have you here of in the studio. And we that's find our heroes, here. Sheriff Dan no, and Marshal no, George. No, last time you were here, you were still at Jersey. He called me a two-timer. That's right. Gulch. It was my second time here. Let's see what now drama is about three. to take but place. But it's the first time here in our clubhouse. Yes, this is pretty cool, man. Yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, well, we're having a great time here. And we've been wanting to get you on because you've been working on all this cool stuff lately. Um, you know, that that's that's really fascinating. Like, but first off, let's talk about some of the things that you've been doing that perhaps people don't recognize just talking about it. But if you tell them what it is, they're going to go, oh, it's him. You've been doing a bunch of trailers, I take it. Yeah, I. Uh, it seems like I have kind of have settled into the Hispanic portion of the trailers I'm doing right now. Ant-Man and the Wasp. We're doing a big campaign for that. Tons of spots for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Skyscraper. Uh, doing that. So I'm working with Universal Studios and Universal Pictures. Yeah, uh, Marvel and stuff like that. So we're doing a lot of trailers in Spanish. It's running on TV mostly, a couple radio spots here and there. Yeah, and uh, I do HBO Sports Minute. That's in English. The other the trailers are in Spanish. Um, and a bunch of promos for Showtime, MMA, and boxing and stuff like that too. Yeah. So wow. it's it's been kind of all over the place. And I did a little bit of a couple of animation episodes for Elena Avalor. Mm. I did one last season. We're doing another one now. I'm uh, working on one now. Doing, doing characters for that? Yeah, I play a King Juan Ramon. So ah. he's like the Latin lover narrator, <laughs> just a little bit uh, more regal. Ah, yeah. okay. Does it doesn't take much to make him more regal. Though. I don't know. I mean, I always consider the uh, the Latin lover narrator more of a metrosexual, bisexual narrator. Okay. Yeah, and it uh, kind of gets me more into into the suave of the character and also right. kind of his connection to the story because it is it is uh, uh, female-centered. Right. Um, is from a you know it's a female showrunner. A lot right. of most of them are women writers that are on there, and this centers around Jane and the three generations of women. Yeah. So it kind of connects me in the in that sense, and also a lot of hints that have been given about what the who the character or the narrator is. Right. So that's how I kind of approach that. Um, but and then I just take the same accent, but I make it more of a you know puff out my chest for Elena of Avalor. So it's it it's the same sound, different intention. It, and uh, now we return to those thrilling kind of, days yeah. of. It's it's continues to be a growing market. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of people in Latin America and a lot of Spanish speaking people, yeah. but the market continues to expand. I mean, you, all you have to do is have a digital antenna here in Los yeah. Angeles and yeah. suddenly realize all the stations are in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. The biggest the biggest Vietnamese, growth I think. Right? Well, that's growing, but the, but the the more rapid growth is is in the acculturated uh, 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 Latino market in the mm -hmm. English or U.S. born Latino market where they want to kind of uh, not necessarily you know it's not a send up like a speedy gonzalez type of thing but as right. long as you kind of have you're a little bit informed about the culture is and and give it more of an american part of the story from that perspective so that i think is growing a little bit faster too yeah yeah but the, and the movie going public is a huge part of it is is latino so yeah that i think has has allowed me to grow my 
Hispanic movie trailer part of the business. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out with the show, the Platino de Not El Macho or, what, or El Noche, the guy with the clown, uh, the clown talk show. He, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> what is this going on uh, yeah, with this guy? Yeah. It's like, this This is this is some major cultural tourism. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 I, it's almost like, uh, 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 what is it? Is it Funny or Die that... that, that uh, it's funny or die, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like a funny or die. You ever seen that Between Two Ferns with Galifianakis? No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's freaking seven. hilarious. It's almost like that, but except it's been running a, a lot longer. I've been binge watching. Yeah. All so the it's wrong almost everybody, the music. guests that go there kind of expect, you know, that, that he's kind of playing a character, like Colbert was playing a character when he right. was doing his talk show. Right. But it's, it's just like that. It's just that they make it seem, and part of the charm is that it looks like a local cable insert kind of thing. Yeah. Sort of like, like, like this show on occasion. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> Anyway, all right, all right. Now you're working on this other cool thing. Uh, it's a PBS three part documentary. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Wonders of Mexico. Wonders of Mexico. Yeah, tell that's us a, about it. That's a weird one because I've always, before I got Jane, my dream was always to do entertainment or documentary narration, mm-hmm. um, and I always thought that would be the first thing. But once I got Jane, um, because the the Latin lover narrator is such a character. What that ended up doing was not necessarily opening the doors for more narration, but mm-hmm. for more animation. Uh, so that was cool, but it wasn't kind of, you know, I was still waiting for that narration. So uh, at PBS, um, they said, hey, why don't we get the Latin lover narrator, Anthony Mendez, to do a narration? They were like, oh, I don't know if that ca- the accent works. So they l- just let me speak with my natural accent. So we're doing a three-part documentary series where we take you through Mexico to talk about the culture, the people, the landscape, and little secret parts of it that a lot of people weren't aware of that starts on august 1st and it runs i think every wednesday is it like a travel log sort of thing or it, it is but it's a little bit more in depth it's almost it's, it's almost like a nature documentary it starts off that way because of what so every episode has its own theme where you go from the the landscape uh the wildlife and the people right and the culture yeah. oh. it, and it, it's a big country and there's yes yes cool it's, stuff a, it's, there. it's some really cool stuff yeah we did that we did all three episodes like in two days in new york and that was a lot of fun yeah yeah so do you think that doing the narrator from Jane the Virgin, not aside from getting you noticed from doing that, did it teach you anything more about narration that you were able to that lent it to, to doing this type of documentary work? No, I think it just allowed me to kind of come into my own with being myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were just talking before we, we, we got on about what kind of changed for me. And it, it came to that point where I said, you know, I'm going to do this and read this the way that I think it should be read. And right. if they like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. Right. I stopped worrying so much about what the specs were. I realized, because all my work comes through my agents, um, I realized that I don't really have to worry too much about the specs because the reason I got it is because I'm kind of there anyway. Right. And then I just do what I feel that the copy needs. So for Jane, I didn't learn anything in terms of of a regular narration. I just learned, I think I kind of, kind of came into my own, right. be more confident with, I'm Anthony Mendez, and they hired me because my name was Anthony Mendez and I was on a TV show. Right. They didn't necessarily <laughs> hire me because they wanted the Latin Lover narrator to do the PBS special. Right. So they wanted Anthony Mendez. And that, once you get in front of a mic and you can be yourself 150%, um, and you're not trying to, to, to give them a voice or a character that you think that they want, it's just so much more freeing. So it's basically me, Anthony Mendez, Taking you on a tour of Mexico. Right. Yeah. Ah, sounds like fun. And that's that's on uh, August first. August first, yeah. PBS. So you'll get that PBS. IMDB credit that says himself. Uh, is, himself. Yes, I know. That nobody really goes down to I was like, damn it, it's all the way at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I do actually. It says himself on it. Yeah. Which yeah. is kinda cool, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Now you're you've got a a comic book coming up. Tell yes. us about this. Are you a, an artist? Or I, I have always been a comic book fan, yeah. but more of the art initially. Like I grew up uh, with Todd McFarlane as one of my favorite artists, Rob Liefeld, and and those guys before they went over to Image. Mm -hmm. Um, And I recently started writing, uh, but I thought because I was in TV, I said, maybe I'll do a TV pilot, but I realized that my love was really in comic books. So what started as a TV pilot, I adapted it into a comic book series called My Tomb, Unrest in Peace. (laughs) And we have a couple of actors that I know that are interested in doing uh, an animatic for it, basically a motion comic part of it. But in the meantime, because that one has taken so long, it took about three to four years, I did another one called Pedro and Miso, which is about a homeless kid who's a genius uh, who has a street cat sage Miso who's by the book and kind of gives some advice. So that's coming out. They're both coming out on Comixology. Um, Pedro Miso is coming out first, hopefully within anywhere from three to four weeks. Um, And then Mike Toom will 
probably be another maybe three to four months from now. Very cool. Yeah. Wow, man, that's great. Yeah. Um, and, and where can people, you've got this stuff on Instagram or? Yeah. If you follow on Instagram, strip dot stories, S T R I P D O T stories. Um, I have, I post everything there or just my regular IG, Anthony Mendez VO. Yeah. I always post everything there. It's just a lot, just a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's basically, you know, I realize in Hollywood to get anything done on TV or film, it's, it's like, you know, one in a million shot. Um, you have to pitch which, several things you at have time. to pitch you have and to go into yeah. meetings and things like that and I said you know with a comic book I can write it I can hire the artists that I want for it and luckily I've gotten some great artists both penciler inkers and colorists on board mm -hmm. and basically tell a story from a American Latino point of view uh, that are inspired by different aspects of my life without me having to cast it and wait till somebody gives you know gives me a budget for it right now that I can afford to kind of fund these individual comic books I'm just gonna Go at it and put these stories out there and help people like it. And just publish them and then tell yeah. people where yeah. they are. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the great thing about the internet. We yeah, do these sorts of things yeah. now. So this is the fifth and final season of Jane the Virgin. Yeah. And we've been talking to you since you started doing I this. I know. Yeah, before then, as a matter of yeah. fact. Yeah. And uh, you know, my wife loves that show. You know, I mean... And when she loves it, I watch <laughs> you it too. To love it too. <laughs> uh, but it's br a brilliant cast, and yeah. it's. But what's it going to be like? If have you, have you done the whole uh, fifth season yet, or are you? No, we haven't started yet. It, I think it, because it's done on on, in, on a, you know on a sound stage. Right. Um, they're a little bit closer to where it when it airs. They start kind of shooting it. Um, right now, the writers' room has been up for about a month. I want to say. Um, we haven't done the first table read. I expect sometime in the fall. Because for this season, what they did, instead of chopping it up into two parts, we're starting mid-season. We're still going to get a full season order. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that's what I expect. Um, <laughs> yes. They ain't going to cancel you in your fifth year. Well, I mean, right? it's the final season. So I think Jenny <laughs> kind of wants, she has a great relationship um, with CBS and, and uh -huh. the network, um, where they're going to allow her to kind of finish the story the way that she had planned it. She had plotted out five years. Yeah. And yeah. it's great that somebody even gets a chance. Because think about it. You write a pilot. Right. Uh, it's a big hurdle to get anybody to read it, yes. anybody of influence. Then it's a big hurdle to get anybody to give it a thumbs up to go produce a pilot. That's almost never happens. Right. When, you know, we look at the odds. And then it's a big hurdle to get an order for a series or half a series and then get the back nine and all that stuff. Right. To go five seasons and be able to say, okay, we plotted out five seasons and we're getting those five seasons, that to me is amazing. Um, so this season, I think they're just working really hard and making sure that they kind of get back to uh, – what the show was originally in terms of what Jane has gone through, you know, all the heartache, right. all the break, all the heartbreak, all the challenges he's gone through. So you're going to see a lot of crazy kind of funnier stuff. Um, and hopefully, uh, I don't want to get away to people no, that are okay. binge watching yeah, on yeah. Netflix. <laughs> hopefully because of the reintroduction or introduction of certain characters, um, there's going to be a lot of dynamics that are going to happen here that people are going to be uh, really excited about with less of a break because we're starting in mid season. Mm -hmm. Now we won't have those long breaks, which is going to go, right through storytelling. We mentioned uh, table read. Yes. Have you been doing table reads all along? And were they? Yeah. Were you doing them virtually before? Yeah, I was doing them via Skype. Except yeah. I used to, like coming here, I used to fly out here for the first and the last one of the season. Oh, okay. Only because they take a cast picture at the end. Oh, yeah. And Jaime Camilo always says, you only show up when there's a camera around. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. But yeah, I won't be in the picture. So I, But now I, I kind of drive down to Manhattan Beach when I can because with the trailers and stuff, as you know, it's always yeah. last minute promos too. Actually, from where are you, Northridge? Northridge, yeah. To Manhattan Beach, that's Man about the that's same as nice... New York to LA. That's yeah, pretty much. That's what it feels. Yeah. Especially day, coming back, yeah. man. Yeah. Especially coming back, it's just yeah, it's it's a lot to be in the car and oh, all I keep yeah. thinking about. I could have done twenty spots in this time. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it's a lot of fun because one of the things that that we go through as voice actors with our own studios is is you do get homes, you do get uh, cabin fever. Mm -hmm. And you know, just to be able to see people and oh, that's what humans look like. Oh, you know, no, that's what adults family. look like. I only get to see my wife and the kids, <laughs> and so it's kind of cool to see that. And also, it's just there's a certain there's a different energy when you get to that table read. Oddly enough, I don't know if I ever told you guys, but when I got the audition, when I booked the pilot, and we were gonna do this because I didn't do the table read for the pilot. We just kind of jumped into where they cut me in. Mm. Um, they said, "Oh, you got a table read." I was, and I didn't know what a table read was. Yeah. So I had to look it up on the internet, <laughs> um, and I saw the Office, uh, the you know the the NBC show, uh, their last table read. And I was like, "Oh, I can do that. That's basically a cold read." Yeah. 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 So I I, I do it in person now when I can. Um, and it's a lot of fun. But 
I try not to be out of the studio for too many hours. Yeah. yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Anthony Mendez, who you recognize from uh, Jane the Virgin, but doing all sorts of cool stuff that we've been talking about. If you've got a question for him, and we're going to talk some tech in a little bit, too. Yes. Uh, toss it in the chat room. Jack Daniels sitting there right on the couch. You can actually get the audience cam up there, so and we can show that we actually do have an audience in here of... <laughs> Of two, <laughs> there they are. Hey, hey. Yay. All right. um, and uh, he'll get those questions to us, and we'll we'll ask Anthony of those questions when we get the chance to do that. So you're now out here, as you were saying, you're living in Northridge now. We've been yeah. talking to you from right off the turnpike in Jersey yeah. all these years, but now what's it like? Uh, you know, I came out here three years. What three years ago? What's it like? the transition been like for you it's like an entire life it's been a year now yeah. so you go through like an entire lifetime in one year because at first you're excited about being here right then you realize that you just left an entire world behind right then it's, it's just like a different country almost you know it's a different feel a different vibe yeah. um everything's as crazy as la can get is still slower compared to new york to new york yeah. or the east coast mm -hmm. even the jersey part that i lived in mm -hmm. um but you go through through being homesick and you start to question because, you know, coming out here on your own and trying to make it is tough enough. Dragging your entire family. Oh, my yeah. wife left her job of 20 years to come out here. Wow. Um, that kind of support is, is you know, it's something that, that I appreciate it, but also it also kind of weighed on me a little bit. You know, did I do the right thing? So you go through your doubts and then uh, you start to question it. But then I think, I think a year time you start to come out of the fog. And you realize that you were on autopilot the entire time um, where you start to feel like home. It starts to, it'll never be back home, of course, but it's right. just, it takes yeah. a minute to kind of get adjusted. But I always knew that I wanted to come out here once I had something kind of going right. instead of me having to start off, especially because of the family. Yeah. When you're, when you're flying West and you're approaching LAX, it's like, I'm almost home. Yeah. And that's, that's when yeah. you know that, you yeah. know, it's like. It left it. The other place is just a place. Yeah, I love it here too yeah. because it's it's the people are are you know it's 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 an odd combination of people being a lot more genuinely nice and especially in retail and, and food service. Where in New York there are a lot of nice people, but the service because I guess it moves so fast, a, it can tend to be a little bit indifferent. Right. Um, so I kind of like it and. The, course for thanksgiving i mean i was in a t-shirt in my backyard in the <laughs> yeah, pool oh yes. for god's sakes i mean you can't you yeah. can't beat that january is even nicer oh man you know, yeah that's yeah, the snow is not it. this deep and it's oh my god and yeah. you're wearing sandals yeah <laughs> <laughs> or have, don't have to dig out your car that actually is well, a big that, thing that's yeah. true yeah you sometimes you have to wash off some of the soot but oh know, yeah but yeah. it's not like yeah. you know. car wash business huge business out here oh yeah Holy big employer God, yeah. big employer is there anybody in this room is not an import from elsewhere Anybody? You're everybody, everybody, everybody came from somewhere. Else. Everybody yeah. came from. Yeah. A yeah. lot of us from the East Coast, and you know. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, Especially in our business, in the entertainment business, it's mm -hmm. just that's where it is. Yeah, it that whole thing—if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. About New York. Yeah, I, I feel that way about LA. Yeah, that's. I mean, true. this is a it's to to subsist here and sustain. It's also, it's also yeah. It's very easy to to. You can to, get a big break. You could get a big get break, here, but you can only. You but that break and just. Yes. Go away after you can like have a show for a year, yes. and then it's yeah. gone, and you're like, oh crap! I've gotten a lot of people, <laughs> teachers that know what I do, or or neighbors, or or friends of my wife. Said, what is Anthony gonna do now that the show is over? You know, because they don't yeah, know you're not the promo and, and stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. so hustling. So it's just you know they don't yeah. really know and understand that they, you're still working, that you're still doing stuff, you're still surviving. But it's it's the thing about LA is that it's very easy to feel like the town owes you something. Mm. And this place doesn't know a damn thing to anybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Because it's a machine that's going to keep running. And the reality is you can build a level of power. You can lose it. You can come back and forth. But the reality is they don't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. So you try to play the game as much as you can. You try to be genuinely as easy to work with as you can. Because mm -hmm. the minute you start to think that you're like this big hot shot, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that you don't have to be selective about the auditions you get or the jobs that you take on. Right. I'm, I've always kind of been very selective about that. But you're not higher than anybody else. I just happen to have a spotlight on me right now that a lot of my friends may not have. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. The minute you start getting into your head like you're this big star or like, oh, I can't believe they didn't hire me for something, 
it's a mm-hmm. it's a slippery slope, and it's very easily you can just end up resenting the place. And at that point, what mm-hmm. the hell is the point? That's yeah. right. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now you've got a, a a special thing going on here: a charity auction for ah, yes. cancer gets lost. Yes. You're auctioning off your first mic. Tell us all about that. I went to WonderCon, being in the comic book business now, I went to WonderCon in An- Anaheim back in March, and uh, Joe Garfman was uh, 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 talking on a panel about what they do uh, for her uh, fan fandom charity, which is uh, Cancer Gets Lost. Lost because it's basically started as a lost fandom from the TV show to benefit cancer. But she's expanded it now. And I said, you know what? I think I've been saving my first microphone, my 416, for a special purpose, I wanted to donate it somewhere, somewhere, somehow I wanted it to benefit somebody. Right. And I met her and it was perfect. I said, hey, I, would you be interested in me auctioning this off? She loves the show. And we're going to auction off the um, uh, the microphone to benefit uh, 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 her charity and, and of course, uh, fighting cancer. Um, and I'm excited about not only my microphone, but everything that's on there and, and, and especially in L.A. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's a good opportunity to have people kind of have a piece of, of memorabilia, maybe collectors, maybe somebody who just wants to support. Um, so there's so many different reasons to, to kind of get it. I signed my first microphone. The microphone that I got was the first microphone that I really, first real one. Mm-hmm. It cost me $1,000. And when I first started, I mean, $1,000 is still a lot of money. Right. But when I first started, I didn't have it. So I had to put it on layaway. It was the one that got me my, my first major promo campaign, my first major movie trailer, and of course the show. And I did the first season of Jane the Virgin on that particular mic, and it's up for auction. Right. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I put the link in the bio, but I also created a short one, which is Antney, A-N-T-N-Y dot U-S slash G-C-L for, G-C-L. oh no, it's a C-G-L, Cancer C-G-L. Gets Lost. C-G-L, yeah. got it. So you go to that, you can, you can just bid on it. Yeah, anything cool, that you can want to, yeah, and, and you know, because they have so many items, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the microphone doesn't go for its full retail price, so it also gives you an opportunity to get a 416. 416, yeah. But, yeah. One that's been... The one that's been it's, kind it's of It's got good ass. karma to it. Yeah, it really does, man. It's yeah. got the right juju. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. That, you know, everybody wants the 416. The 416, the juju yeah. edition. Yeah, I like ah, that. Yeah, okay. I like that. We should talk to Sennheiser about that. Say, say that domain again because I'm trying to bid on it right it's now. A, <laughs> <laughs> it's Antony, that's A N T N Y dot U S. Oh, got it. Slash. Forward slash. Oh, oh, uh, forward yeah. slash. Um, cancer gets lost in initials. C G L. Got it. All right. All right. Anthony Mendez is our guest. And again, if you got a question for him, and I'm sure the questions are piling up in the chat room uh, for Anthony as we talk about all this cool stuff. But you're, you, I mean, we're just talking about microphones there with the, the 416. You're a tech guy. Yeah. I mean, you've got, what have you got? Not as much through? as George, but I'm tech enough to be able yeah. to figure things out. I don't have a lot. It's become smaller and smaller. Right. I started with a 733 megahertz G4 that they used to call the the silver, Quicksilver. Yeah. I'm sure you remember those. Pretty was, noisy, right? Yeah, pretty noisy. And it, But it was cool because it was the first ones right after the blue boxes where right. you can just open the latch and open the drop the side. Right. Um, that so was I started pretty with revolutionary. That. It had, yeah, it was. It really was. All the guts and you can, right had, Yes. You can update the cards and everything. That died on me when I got my first major promo campaign for CNN. Hmm. So they called me. They say, hey, can you go in 15 minutes? I was like, oh. Shoot, I like gotta literally do this. My like computer on the just died. Yeah. So I ran out and bought a four hundred dollar Asus laptop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it worked. And I was yeah. like, used it for I don't need to do anything else. So I've been using laptops ever since 2010, 2009. Yeah. 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 So but basically what I have in my studio is is a a, a Dell laptop now. Uh-huh. Um but I my daughter wants to use it, so I give it to her sometimes and I <laughs> and I have also a, a Mac Mini. So yeah. I kind of jump back and forth. Um, but for the uh, interface, I use, and this is because of George, because my Avalon 737 needs to be recapped. Basically, the capacitors, after a while, they kind of dry up and they create right. this horrible hum. Um, and I didn't want to deal with tubes anymore. So I spoke to George, um, and he recommended the Grace M103, because it has a similar layout in terms of you know the EQ, the compression. Similar features. Yeah. Similar features. Yeah. And, and it sounds almost too, the same, yeah. because... You know, uh, even though the 737 is a tube, when, when it's new, when it's in the condition it's supposed to be, it doesn't really color. Right. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, Class A circuitry and all that other stuff. But the M103 allowed me to kind of transition without changing my sound too much, and it gave me a cleaner sound. And also, if in the middle of the night or something, I have to flip it on, I don't have to wait the half hour or so till it warms up. Right. So I have the Audient 
ID4, which is George also recommended as the interface, Great. into my laptop. Um, the M103 is powering um, uh, my MKH the microphone, the MKH8040, which I replaced uh, the, the my 416 with. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And you have a booth, or no? I don't like booths. You're, okay, you like yeah. just in your I, office. I there? try to treat rooms with its natural environment. So <clears throat> I like to have shelves with different size books and DVD cases mm -hmm. as my diffusers. Yep. I like to have heavy uh, sound blankets right. around. Right. Uh, so I want it to still feel like a house, like a home. Um, so I use that as as I do have uh, baffle baffle bafflers or baffle walls. Mm -hmm. I have two of those that I can move around partitions. Go so I basically like to yeah, call it. Gobo, Gobo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I basically put two of those, not to close myself in, but kind of control. Mm -hmm. So they're like layered like this almost. Right. So I don't have a closed in booth and it mm -hmm. works fine. I'm yeah. actually in a walk in closet that's surrounded by three different rooms. So I have like two or three doors. And that's great. An interior great. closet yeah. is fabulous. When, yeah. you were, when you were shopping for the, the house, um, obviously this is a major piece of the criteria yes. right? when you were looking for homes. Yeah, every single home that I went to, I wanted to make sure that there was a room within a room. Some of them had garages, but they weren't, had no power and no right. AC. And heat in the valley, in the summer, in a garage. It gets warm here. It's a little bit summer. hot. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. I know people are like, I got a whisp room where we can put it. I was thinking of the garage. I'm like, holy smokes. No, you can yeah. yeah. lose a few pounds doing yeah, it that. Is, it is tough. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so that's part of the criteria. My, it's basically a walk in closet. There's a bathroom on this side, the bedroom, a closet here, and another bedroom here. Um, and then the alleyway between me and the next home is 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 empty, and you can't hear them or anything. So it's just perfect. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing about the houses here in Southern California. What the ones that are like, you know, mid-century, 1950s yeah. sort of. If you go to a party and someone says, "Where's the bathroom?" It's like where it always is. Because the bathroom is in the same place in every house, just slightly different yeah, rearrangements yeah. of it. So, uh, you know, unless they've added on or something along those lines. Yeah, that that M that M one hundred three was a, it was a kind of a lucky find because I I've yeah. known the company Grace for a long time, oh, but one right. of my clients, I think I believe it was Jim Tasker, had a what seven thirty seven Avalon that was getting flaky, and I was like. I needed to get him something to throw in there real quick, get him back up online. And I looked, and that was the one that had similar features. I had just started looking just into the out. 8040, the MKH8040, when I yeah. met you in person for the first time at AES. And, right. you know, the guys from Grace were there. And I was listening to it. I, I really liked it. The quality mm -hmm. looked good. And, and I said, this is the, this is the preamp I'm going mm -hmm. to go with. And it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The I pizza think. wasn't that great there, but <laughs> the preamp. But it was, was free. But it, yeah, <laughs> they mean well. They mean yeah, there's, yeah. Pizza, there's a pizzeria just opened uh, in West in, in Santa Monica, uh, Mar Vista called uh, Wall Street Pizza. Is it Wall Street Pizza though? No. It's good. It's, Let me tell there. you. Oh, one of the things I always been complaining about, you know, uh, as a sidebar thing, pizza. Right, yeah, coming from the East Coast, coming from pizza New York, in yeah, California yeah. is not what I would come to what I know as pizza. There are some great pizza here. There's yeah. not, that's not the problem. The problem right. is I wanted, you know, the shiny grease on the top floating yes. in puddles <laughs> on the you're thing. Not gonna find that here, no. But yeah. I was in Santa Monica the other day and they're not giving me any money for this. Perry's <laughs> Beach Cafe and Rentals. You're kidding me. You found good pizza at Perry's? Their pizza, <laughs> their pizza tastes almost like a New York Sicilian slice. Really? Oh, yeah, the Sicilian man. style. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Sicilian style. I mean, they still haven't found the round New York style, but that one I really enjoyed. So I might just drive down there just yeah. for the next. See, we don't pizza. we don't have a lot of Sicilians here. It, <laughs> if anything, they're hiding under a, another name in some condo yeah, in, Jersey, in Santa I mean, Monica. Jersey. Yeah. I mean, Jersey, New York. You can't you yeah, can't find a bad pizza. It's really right, tough. That's right. Yeah. Well, but at least all the there's. But you got so many choices of food here. Yeah, you do. Is, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's a great thing about it. Anthony Mendez is our guest, and uh, we'll be taking your questions for him, and maybe talk a little bit more tech right after this important message, so don't go away. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, <laughs> three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, Perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. 
Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Yes, it's another exclusive deal for the first 12 buyers from voiceoveressentials.com. A free ABS boom microphone strap or a Vox Pop stop filter with purchase of a MicPort Pro. No coupon code needed. You'll be able to get one or the other free with the purchase of a MicPort Pro, but not both. Just put them in the cart and the discount will show. You may not know this. I'll bet you didn't. It's National Protect and Preserve Your Microphone Month. Who knew? And there's, here's two great ways for you to protect your valuable microphone and get the best analog to digital preamp converter on the planet. Stop those plosives and that moisture, or a spit, from damaging your diaphragm in your microphone with their Vox Pop Stop All Metal Pop Filter, free with a MicPort Pro. Or prevent a dented, ruined microphone <laughs> on a boom arm stand with the ABS Adjustable Boom stop, and there it is. Now, how does this thing work? Well, we'll show you how this thing works. You know, sometimes you got a microphone and you got it up there like that, and perhaps the gooseneck's a little loose and it starts, you, you break. If you've got the boom jock on here, it just adjusts it and it just stops it, just like that. See, just like that. I'm gonna try and not take out Anthony's teeth, but. <laughs> The ABS. We've been talking about this thing for years from uh, from Harlan Hogan and VoiceOver Essentials. And uh, you can get one for free when you buy a MicPort Pro. But the first 12 viewers only. So go on over right this second, right now, over to VoiceOverEssentials.com. Right at the bottom of the page, you'll find the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his voice, uh, his, his Porta Booth Pro. That's what it is. And click on that, it'll take you right over there. And you can get a an ABS boom stop right there and their pop stop or one or the other if you buy a MicPort Pro right now from voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do... They break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, guess what? We're back on VoiceOver Body Shop, and our guest is Anthony Mendez, who's been telling us all sorts of cool stuff. That's a big-ass wave behind me. I just noticed that. Go yeah. ahead, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This, this is, we want people to send us their booths so we can, you know, show us your booths. It, they're, it's right here. We've got to remember whose booth this is, though. It's written down somewhere. Wait, wait, before we go to the questions, yes. you, you mentioned everything, all your gear, but not your software. Ah, yes. What are you recording what on you now? Uh, I record, every year I change it, whatever I'm in the mood for. And right now, I'm do, using Adobe Audition. Oh, okay. Good yeah. man. Yeah. CS or whatever the update, I don't know. It's just whatever it's there. CC 2018. <laughs> Yeah, whatever it's easy to transition from Mac to Windows back and forth. And yeah. because I'm doing the comic book stuff, I use a lot of Illustrator, Photoshop, so I'm just doing the multiple things integrated. already. And yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. All righty. Well, we have a few questions from our amazing audience all over the Fruited Plain and all over the earth. Uh, but we're going to stay right here in Sherman Oaks. Uh, Jack Daniel gets the first question. 
That's the uh, beauty of being the guy in charge of the question. <laughs> Doesn't it, though? <laughs> oh, by the way, Anthony, here's something we got to try. Tomato pie in Silver Lake. Apparently, they bring in chemicals from New York. <laughs> my, I'm being serious. J.V. Martin actually said this. Cool. So we got to right. try that. Thank you, J.V. Yeah. All right. So here's the, my, my question what is, is, is. What is it called again? Uh, tomato pie in tomato Silver pie Lake. Tomato pie in North Lake. I got a couple okay. places. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so anyway, another friend of mine, I don't know if you know him, Mario Gangori, he's from Florida. He does a lot of promo, both Spanish and English. He talks about the differences in tone. Um, and I'm wondering, do you have different sets of characters you go to for different shows, different promos, different types of promo, um, or different voices, whatever you want to call it? And do those characters and or voices transcend the language, or do you have different sets of them, perhaps, for each language? It depends. I, I kind of... Now with the ongoing things, for example, the HBO stuff I do, it's almost um, not exactly pillow talk, I would call it, but it's basically this low end kind of character just calmly telling you on the drive because those are heard mostly in the car. So I don't really uh, I don't really pay too much attention to whether or not that's a character. I already kind of know that every single thing requires a different character um, in terms of transcending language. Um, when it comes to voiceover, uh, when it comes to branding, that's something different, obviously, because um, your personality can transcend anything. But when it comes to the voices and the characters, that you, it's very difficult to kind of transcend language in voiceover um, because it's so specific to what the message is. And if you're connected to what that message is, um, some people might be able to pick up on the energy of what you're trying to tell, trying right. to say, but it doesn't really transcend it per se. As a person, you can kind of transcend cultures and things like that if you're, you know, if you're nice and, and easy to work with with everybody. Um, but I'm not too sure that, that my characters necessarily transcend language. The Latin lover narrator, um, his accent is, is kind of enhances the thing. And in that case, I guess it kind of transcends because it's a general market show. Um, but it's basically has to do with the writing more than anything else, I think. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. But Abuela makes up for the rest of that. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. She speaks Justin mostly in Spanish. But you can actually follow her after. You could. Yeah. Which is, which yeah. is cool. Who's the actress that plays her? Yvonne Cole. Yeah, she's been around. For, she knows every single... She's She had her own uh, uh, variety show in Puerto Rico. Yeah. She was a Miss Puerto Rico. She's been oh. she's been uh, in the entertainment business for quite a while. Yeah. She was going to retire right before she got the audition to, uh, to, well, for Jane. Now she can. Now she can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our next question comes from another studio member. <laughs> Wendy Shapiro. Oh. Hey. Hey. Um, so you were saying that you did the table read. Uh, and so when you do table reads for Jane and whatnot, do you find different things that if you were just sitting in your booth, you wouldn't? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, you, uh, can you expound on that? The energy of the actors are picked up better than, than Skype could. Before I moved out here, I was only able to attend either the first table read for the season or the last one where they took the cast picture. And there's pros and cons to both. When you're in Skype, as a voice actor, you're so used to being in front of a mic you're freer when you're in the booth so i do a lot more ad-libbing when i'm on the mic in skype on a table read and a couple of occasions those lines have made it in once or twice um i don't do as much when i'm doing the table read because it seems a little bit more disruptive doing it there um but i can pick up on more of what the different characters intentions are and then sometimes i make mental notes for when i go ahead and do the the prelim because the way it works is i get the 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 the, uh, the script right and the table read the next day or, or when they start shooting I do the prelim, which is basically front to back of the show. They cut it in when they get their dailies. Um, for people who don't know, um, the dailies are a word shot for that day, and then they go send them over to the editor. So they start cutting in my voice as they're cutting in the dailies for, for the show. Um, and then Jenny goes and sees if there's any tone changes or any notes from the studio or whatever she wants to change, and then we do pickups for that. But the energy in the room is just, it's, it's invaluable what you can pick up in terms of, of, and these actors are just so good at what they do, especially Gina, who can just walk in and just give her all in this. It, there are moments where she has to break down and cheer him. She can, she just shifts from one to the other right there in the table read and that kind of blows me away. So I kind of have to, it kind of motivates me to get that energy and take it back. And yeah, so it, it is, it is invaluable to actually be physically there. Yeah, and when I can, I do it. Cool. You ever think about doing on screen yourself? No. Okay. no, I think about. It. I mean, I'm open to everything, right? right? You never can be closed to anything when it comes to entertainment, and I'm not above or below anything. Right. Um, but 
the reality is that it kind of has to work with my schedule at this point because it takes me away from the studio. Right. And when they need promos or trailers, like for example, the Ant Man right. stuff that we're working on now, that's that was for a while until we until the release where they might have like you know post release reviews. Um, it was every day. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a spot or an editor pick up, and I can't afford to be away from the studio. So if they allow me, if so it works with my schedule and they allow me to have a mobile setup in, in the studio, in the trailer. Yeah, baby. Uh, Fat trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then uh, then yeah. I, I, I'm open to do anything, yeah. Plus, I did study acting in New York because I kind of felt that I always needed it to be able to be a oh, better absolutely. voice actor. So I did scene study. I did improv in New York and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. 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 We are actors. We are actors, yeah. Just as voice yeah. in the first yeah. part of it. I just feel that I'm much better at being in a vocal booth than I would be on set, obviously. Like, if you were to take somebody that was on set put them in a vocal booth, it's a new environment for them, so it'd be the flip. But by the 200th take, I should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Next question from Fred North, Mr. Woodham. Uh, he says, will you self-publish the comics, um, or are you going to use like an Amazon kind of printing method? Yeah, what, what ends up happening is that printing is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's costly. And there are some printers here in California that do it competitively. Mm -hmm. um, but the printing that you want is offset printing. As old as it is, it still gives you the best quality. Mm -hmm. um, but laser printers have come a long way, and right. they look amazing now. Yeah. So you could get away with it with laser mm -hmm. um, uh, printing, and it, and it looks rich, it looks great, but it's not the same thing. So I just don't feel that I'm going to get a return for, for an indie comic or self, to actually self-publish it. The first one, I'll, I will run a, a print, a uh, limited print for promotional purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe do a couple of signings in New York and here and stuff like that at comic shops. Um, but it's going to be mostly digital on Comixology. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, of All course, right. whatever stories I want to pitch to like Image and things like that and do proposals. If, they, if somebody wants to pick it up, that's fine. But in the meantime, there's just no need for me to kind of print it, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Save on paper. Yeah. Save a few trees. Mm -hmm. All right. J.V. Martin, who's been on this very show, asks... Listening to you perform on Jane the Virgin and then hearing you speak in this interview raises this question. On Jane, is Anthony Mendez the series narrator or is the narrator actually a character played by Anthony Mendez? That's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question because it's unique, right? Because in if you're hiring a, a regular person to, to, to narrate in their own voice, like the PBS stuff, right. I'm credited as myself. Right. But this is a, it's called the Latin lover narrator for a reason and they'll reveal it as it goes on. Um, it is a character. It is a character that is narrating uh, the show and telling the story. Um, so, and we'll reveal in the fifth season who the narrator is or what his relationship is to the other characters oh. um, in the fifth and final season. Hmm. So it's a great question. Um, so it is a character that I kind of have to put on uh, for it, but um, that's not either bad or good. It's just, you have to kind of approach and, and I approach everything as a character anyway, yeah. like we were talking before. Right. Um, it's just not something as, I don't have to make as many acting choices in like promos and trailers as I would for the show, for example. That's the biggest difference. Okay. I think that was the question. Yeah, that was. Okay. I mean, you were talking a little bit about before, but that And something about pizza better. or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we have to talk about the important stuff. <laughs> Tremaine Kendrick Mosley has a question. Mr. Yeah, Wooden, you no, get other known, also known as Trey. That's hey, an Trey. awesome name. <laughs> the Trey Man. That's right. Do you make personal appearances being the narrator on the show and what impact has your character and the cast as a whole made within the latin community so that's a two totally question, different questions but yeah it's, it's two, but it, it, the first one uh, making appearances i just i got into voiceovers specifically so i don't have to make appearances <laughs> but i i do them for certain events for example i did a couple of red carpets for i get invited to premieres or shows and things like that um, I had to hire a publicist because I don't have the time to kind of fetch when the show first started and yeah. started getting attention and after the Emmy nominations. Um, so you do operate as a regular on-camera actor. And I hate to use the word celebrity because the reality is you really aren't. Maurice Tobias had always told me, and this is something I always look back on, you don't have the career. Your voice does. So people may be familiar yeah. with my voice, but they still yeah. refer to me in some articles as the narrator while they mention all the other actors' names. Sure. And my yeah. publicist would come in and she would kind of let Put, them know. Puts in your yeah. place. <laughs> puts but, in your place, doesn't it? But in terms of appearance, <laughs> I don't have to kind of attend. I do it because it's it's good to have these relationships. Everything in this business is relationships. Yeah. Um, and I don't do it necessarily because I want something out of anybody. It's just it's good to interact with other people that are doing something similar or different from voiceover. Mm -hmm. It's another world. So I try to get out as much as I can to like. How about events. cons? 
Not yet. I will be attending once the the comic books drop. I do have a schedule of all the cons. There's a ton yeah. of them here in California, which is awesome. Everywhere from <laughs> Ontario to Anaheim to Long Beach, yeah. San Diego. It's just yeah. you can spend the whole year going to freaking cons out here, which is <laughs> awesome. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. So next year, I am going to be doing the rounds with with the uh, uh, and the company. Um, what was the other question? Oh, the other part was pizza, well, right? Jack, give me that. Oh, you can, you can tell I haven't eaten, right? <laughs> Impact in the Latin community, Impact uh, the Latin community yeah. is, has is has been fantastic because. For two reasons, you know, the, the Latin community is not this homogenized culture, right? Sure. There's a bunch of different cultures within the culture. And then on top of that, you have two different layers because you have the native Spanish speakers and the American acculturated uh, uh, Latinos. So I think the biggest impact has been, has been to be able to see somebody reflected that kind of looks like them, sounds like them, and talks like them um, on TV. A predominantly Latino mm -hmm. cast with a, with a lot of Latino writers is just an amazing thing to have. So I think... Twofold, people as a viewer, it it, it it's nice to see, um, and it's and also for for actors and people that want to be writers, it's it's also great to see that as well. So I think it's been a positive thing, and the critics have loved the show, which has been you know a real blessing. But that doesn't always go that way. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for joining thank us here you. live in our this studio after talking to you like over these yes, great distances yes. for years and so it's great to have oh, can you we slip here. one more in there's more this there's is from question? our very own Catherine curtain yes oh Catherine, gotta get this in i did not see that just slipped in all right are any of your children in interested in following your footsteps in any way yes on uh, camera off camera alicia whatever. uh who's my uh 10 year old has, has done uh a rapping animation thing for uh, pbs kids and oh. she already so she already has worked Oh, wow. uh, and then Maya wants to actually do the whole audition thing, and that I'm kind of a little bit hesitant because of that. You know, it's just, it's, just a, it's a tough business. But does your I'm, wife have the time to do? That's the other thing. Not just my wife, me, because we're both you working. Guys both. Yeah, yeah, we both have to have time yeah. to do it. So I think what I'm going to do with, with Maya is kind of train her myself at home, um, and then maybe I'll charge her a discount or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so they, they are interested. It's just that they I have to kind of find the time to make sure that they yeah. have to allow them to be kids, man. They have to be really motivated. Because yes. we, we started off Ella at a very young age on camera, you know. And then as soon as she pushed back, we immediately... You just, have to, yes. Well, we were like, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every year I just say, you want to you try that again? You want to <laughs> have a little fun for yeah. college or something? It's a balance no. because as, no. as kids, you you know, they, they don't, they want to, they're on to the next thing. So you have to find yeah. a way to continue to teach them committed, to be committed to something. Yeah. But at the same time, don't make it a drag because then what's the yeah. point? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be fun or yeah. why do it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, thanks for being with us. Thanks again, man. It's great Appreciate to see it. you, man. It's great you to too. have you on here. All right, George and I'll be right back to wrap things up here on VoiceOver Body Shop right after this. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics. And now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired, then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Hey, everybody, this is about our great friends and sponsors over at Source Elements. They're the creators of Source Connect, that amazing software that by now you should probably know all about. But if you don't, it's a software that allows you to connect your studio to another remote studio with really high quality bi-directional audio. Think of it as like an ISDN type thing that you can actually afford and actually get, which is not really happening that much with ISDN anymore. It's also, you can think of it as like a really, really high quality version of Skype for audio only that will allow you to send sample rate accurate locked audio it does not drift it doesn't change quality as your bandwidth goes up and down no it stays locked in time and in quality guaranteed throughout the session but it also has a backup system and if there is a dropout because of some interruption it can automatically fill in the audio it's like magic 
If you want to give it a try, you go to source-elements.com and you can get a 15-day free trial. You don't have to have one of those little iLock dongly things to try out Source Connect or use Source Connect standard now and uh, give it a shot. And please tell them we, we sent you over there, all right? All right, we'll be right back to wrap this up. And thanks again. All right, we're back. Well, thanks again to Anthony Mendez for he's always a great interview. I know it's going to be great. Him on here, and I knew it. it yes, yeah. awesome. Next week on this show, much to my surprise, uh, we have because we just found out. It might That's be why reason. I was surprised by it. <laughs> uh, Mike Lenz from Albany, New York, mm -hmm. the other end of the throughway from where I'm from. Yeah, uh, former mayor. He was in politics for ten years. Now in voiceover for ten years. He has a podcast. He's a member of World Voices. All right. And uh, started a podcast company, too. So he's going to be our guest next week. That's here cool. On, Vo on VoiceOver Body I'll Show. enjoy talking a little bit of shop with him about the whole podcasting thing. And I can if talk politics with him. you guys don't with mind, him. you know, getting a little <laughs> off topic of VO. It's yeah. fun once in a while. That's true. Who are our donors of the week? Oh, maybe I should go take a look. We've been getting a, a steady stream of people who subscribe to the show, which is really cool because we don't have to... Uh, keep bugging you. You just put it on auto donate and money keeps coming. And maybe you guys just forget how to turn it off. I don't know. You don't have to forget. It's though. nice. It's though. Fine. We really appreciate it. Tracy H. Mm -hmm. Reynolds, Andrew Kaufman, Eric Aragoni. These are names that I read every single week. It's really wonderful. Um, we've also got donations from a few others here whose names aren't popping up at the top here. So I'll just scroll down. Uh, Shana or Shanna, I hope it's, I never say the same toy, same way twice. Pennington you know Baird, uh, <laughs> Antland Productions, that's our buddy Uncle Roy. And also new since last week, I see the name, uh, Diana Birdsall. So these are names, oh, Stephanie Sutherland, thank you. These are names that I've read many times because they're subscribers. But you don't have to subscribe, you don't have to have it recurring. If you see a guest on, you find some value and just, you can make a one-time little donation it's all done over paypal right on the website so thank you so much for all those that do support we appreciate it right and of course we want to remind you again that we're here to help you with your home studios if you want to talk to george they go to george the dot tech or george the tech dot com right and if you want to talk to me and have some fun you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com forward oh, there's slash no there's no forward Sorry. slash on that one <laughs> all right uh, let's see here. I need pizza. That's the problem. Yes. No, if if you have past credits from another place, you, they can use those. Oh, yeah. I mentioned this last week. I'm going to take this off and of run down for next Don't week. Don't have to mention any names. You know, if, if you do, if you've bought services in the past that were intended to be for me, forward me your receipts. I will be happy to make good on those past purchases because, uh, you know, things happen. I'm no longer with that other company, and I'd really like to make sure you guys are taken care of. I get emails couple of times a month saying i bought a service credit from you in 2015 can i still use it i'm like yes send it on over i'll, I'll take care of you all righty uh the show logs if you want to hear everything we talked about tonight in order time code jack degolia who actually had a, a he had a trailer with us tonight mm -hmm. he, was, he was doing one of the bumpers oh uh, yeah that was the one with the, oh, yeah. the western one that was jack degolia that was one. who is that it's jack degolia uh, anyway, uh, the show logs are there, and they can give you all the time uh, for when something was said, and it makes it easier to watch it on YouTube. I'm going to search for the word pizza. There you go. I'm going to search it's for gonna, pizza, it's gonna and I'm going to find the name times. of all the pizzerias that were mentioned yeah, tonight really. on the show. Uh, we're here live every Monday night, most almost every Monday night, and if you want to be in our audience... Like Ari is right now. <laughs> if you like petting you can, doggies. Yeah. Uh, come on over here. Just let us know uh, if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. And uh, write to us at theguys at vobs.tv and say audience in the subject line. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Show us your booths. Richard Durrington's booth. This is Richard Durrington's booth and his stuff and his microphone and stuff. If you want to have your booth on here, take a picture of it in landscape mm -hmm. not in portrait in landscape and send it to us again at uh, the guys at vobs.tv um we're live every monday night 
pretty much every Monday night if we're not on holiday. And uh, it's at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. But you can also catch it as a podcast, which many of you do. Right. Or watch it in replay on VOBS. Which a lot uh, of people uh, do. The, the YouTube channel VOBS. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you guys finding us any way you can. So tell a friend, will you? Yeah. And, and if uh, you're having a little trouble finding the show on our website www.vobs.tv. Yeah, we're sorting out the domain. Well, I think we'll, it literally it, got forwarded like 24 hours ago. Right, so, so it'll, take well, it'll, it'll take a little while to <laughs> propagate, as our webmaster likes to say. Yeah. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. vo to go go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. And, of course, we'd like to thank uh, the people who really make this show possible. First, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for Betterment of Live Webcasting. <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you. Very smart. Yeah. Our, produ- uh, <laughs> pr- our producer, Catherine Curridan. <laughs> Jack Daniel doing the chat room and YouTube. Basically, our, what are we calling him? Our social media czar? Czar. Yeah. Yes, he's our social media czar. And Wendy, who lets mm. him come and do this, who's That's here with him today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, of course, our floor director, producer, technical guru, the one that makes it all happen by pressing all the but- the right buttons, uh, Susan Merlino. And Jack DeGoli for the show notes. And, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee, Lee Penny. Penny. Lee, come visit Lee. us, man. Where are you, man? Probably in France. You know what he's doing? He's making machining A arms for Traxxas or some kind of off road radio control vehicle. Got to do something with your life. (laughs) That's what he's doing. You're having fun. I see him on Instagram. All right. You can buy A arms. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We know this is not an easy business. Just look at somebody like Anthony Mendez. He had a struggle just like everybody else, but it can happen. And if you need help with your home studio, this is the place to come to. And if you want to learn about all cool stuff, sorts of stuff from the great people in our business, join us here every Monday night. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Right. Have a great week, everybody. And have a great 4th of July. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs>